All right. I wonder if I can do it this way. No, I can't. Okay. Hello, hello, whoever is here. We are going to make a mess today. Yay! <laughs> All right, I'm still getting at some of my supplies for the resin here. So I'm gonna be doing resin and I'm gonna be working with gypsum powder today. So we're gonna go through um, how to mold stones, how I make my own stones, and how I make the bases for the necklace pendants and how I put some finishing touches on them as well. So um, I'm by no means an expert on resin, but I will do my best to teach you what I know. And we'll go from there. We'll hope for the best. All right, just grab my paper towel. Okay, I think that's all I need. Good morning. Hey, Geraldine. How you doing, love? It's good to see ya. I'm going to try and get as much space in the camera as I can here. I'm not going to be able to always see comments, but we'll keep going back and forth and see what we can do. I think we are going to, we're going to start with the gypsum because it is the messiest and um, I don't want to pour the resin first and then risk getting any so actually, let me take my gloves off. Um, I don't want to risk getting any powder or gypsum in the resin. So I'm going to actually cover a couple of things so that I don't get them any dirtier than absolutely necessary. Um, what I'm doing with my resin, I'm using Art Resin. I've got these little small bottles here of Art Resin brand. I've got them soaking in some hot water right now. So this is to help some of the bubbles come up to the top so that there's not they're not super full of bubbles when I go to pour. There's still gonna be bubbles there, but it's uh, not gonna be quite as bad. And then I have a little measuring cup that I stir and mix in. And then I mix my two different parts because there's a hardener and then there's the resin itself. And I mix them in these little cups here. They have to be mixed at exact um, equal parts. And then I pour them into this and mix them together before pouring them on the pendants or whatever else it is that I'm making. So we're gonna make a little bit of it today. I've got a couple uh, incense holders that I started to make a while back that I would really like to finish. Uh, they're these little discs and I've, I've poured some resin on them already. I just need to do a smooth coat on the top for a couple of these. And then I actually drill a hole in the middle um, and that holds the incense stick in the middle. So if I have, if I manage to mix enough resin then we um, might pour those as well. Um, and yeah, I'll just kind of talk you through my process here. Hey Kim, how you doing? How's it going in New Jersey? Your stuff should be getting to you soon. Hey Janice. All right, so we're gonna do resin second because um, I don't wanna get things any dirtier than absolutely necessary. Um, so I'll show you kind of the touch-ups that I'm gonna do. I've got a mold ready so we can pour some resin in there. Um, and then for the gypsum, I've got a tea light holder mold. I've got a new heart mold that is a new one for me. Um, and it's kind of a puffy heart. I have a flat heart mold that makes these flat hearts, which I really, really like. Uh, but this one's puffy, so it's just different, and it's fun to have different ones. And then this is a little mini stone uh, mold that I have, so in case I mix too much uh, or don't get my ratios, my amounts uh, correct, then I can have this for kind of some overflow. So we're going to go through that, and then in this big bucket here, I have my gypsum powder. Um, what I do not have is something to mix it in, though, so bear with me. I really thought I was on the ball this morning. Apparently not. Oh, here we go. Well, that's a little bit bigger than I'd like. Oh, that one's really dirty. That one's really dirty. Okay, bear with me two seconds, you guys. I'm just going to go grab another Tupperware, and I will be right back. I know exactly where it is, so it won't take me long. Two minutes. Not even.
backstory. I haven't done the gypsum in quite some time, so I uh, completely did not realize that I didn't have a bowl there to mix. All right. I hope it gets to you soon. You're hearing the Jeopardy theme song in your head. That's amazing. How you doing, Jan? It's good to see ya. All right, so yeah, I haven't done this in a while because I am almost out of my gypsum powder. Um, so I uh, have been kind of hoarding the powder for a little while until I can get some more. They, I get them in 50 pound boxes and it's only 30 bucks for a 50 pound box, which is really, really good. Um, but it's $30 in shipping. And I briefly decided for, thought I would uh, take a drive over to Mississauga. So I'm on the east side of Toronto, about an hour and a half east of Toronto, and Mississauga is on the other side of Toronto, on the west. And I thought, oh, I'll take a drive over one day and I'll get two boxes and that'll save me that $30 in shipping. And I thought, I'm gonna spend at least 50 bucks in gas and have to take at least three hours of my time to get over there. So I'm gonna suck it up and I'm gonna pay for shipping again and let somebody else bring it and carry it for me. Ah, oh, I just got a sip of my tea. Okay, so I have, when I get my 50 pound boxes, I put them into these Tupperware containers because they're more manageable, they're a little lighter. Um, and then I kind of go from there and move it in and around. Can you tell us where you get your products and the sizes to get started out? I've been looking, certainly. So um, I'm in Canada, so I get my gypsum, which is Ultra Cal 30. I get it at a store called Sculpture Supply Canada. It's in Mississauga, Ontario. The gypsum comes in 50 pound boxes and it also comes in 10 pound bags. Now the 50 pound box is $30. I don't know how much the 10 pound is, but I'm guessing it's significantly less. Um, I'm guessing it's probably around $10, eight or $10. Um, but it's heavy stuff, right? So you wanna, if you need to get it shipped to you, just prepare to spend money on some shipping. Now, that being said, I had a 50 pound box shipped and it was only $30. So all in all, not too, too terrible. Um, so I get, and then I use uh, measuring cups from the dollar store. I've got um, just uh, popsicle sticks to help me level the powder. Um, and then I keep a bottle of water handy and that's what I use to measure uh, the water. It's a, how do they put it out? It's, it's basically, it's a 100 to 38. So 100 of the gypsum, 38 of water. So you're basically doing two and a half times more gypsum than water. So it's gonna end up being kind of like a milkshake consistency. Now my molds, I got this mold um, from Happy Dotting Company. It's a tea light holder mold. It will end up, uh, let me see if I've got a candle holder here that I can show you what it looks like when they're made up. Hey guys, I'm so excited for the day when I will have my own place and my own studio with all of my stuff set out proper so I can know where everything is. So it'll make these tea light candle holders. I put felt on the bottom of them, but they're really nice to paint. Uh, and then the tea light candle can go right in the middle there. So um, that's what that looks like when it's done. This is what it looks like as a mold. Um, and then th I also have stone molds. So the three inch and four inch uh, pre-made stones that I sell on my website. I also got the molds for those from Happy Dotting Company. Devon Dotting is another great mold company. She makes some incredible, incredible molds. Um, and Pisa Supply, if you are in Canada and wanna buy from a Canadian supplier, P-I-E-S as in Sam A Supply on Etsy. That is where I got my mini stone mold and she has a ton of really, really cool molds as well. And she sells blanks too. Sorry, let me just try and come back and catch up on the comments here, sorry. Uh, do I have, um, do you not have Amazon Prime? I do not. Um, and I can't get Ultra Cal 30 on Amazon um, in Canada. Unfortunately not. 
So that's a that's a really good point though. If you're in the US, check Amazon, check your hardware stores. If you have Amazon Prime, then you can uh, get a deal like Jan has there. That's awesome. How do you add, hey Rach, how you doing love? How do you add one what? A, tea, a candle holder? Will you send me a message? This is my friend Rachel, she is in New Brunswick and um, I miss her terribly. Okay, so that is where I get all of my supplies. So when we're mixing these, I'm gonna show you, I think. Now, here's, here's the thing. I have no idea how much of this stuff I'm gonna need. Most of my life is trial and error. Yeah, you just shoot me a message, Rach. Let me know what you want, love. And I can do one for ya. Um, so I have no idea how much I need to fill these two molds, to fill the tea light candle holder and this one. I, like most of my life, it's trial and error. If I mix it and it doesn't work, oh well. If it mix and it does work, then that's a win for the day. Say hi to Rob for me. Tell him I haven't forgotten about him for his batteries. I just haven't been up there lately. Um, so I have no idea how much I need. So, but because I have three molds, I know it's a fairly decent amount. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna start with um, three, three quarters of a cup. Okay, so I like to do small ones like this, like a quarter cup at a time, because then it's easy for me to do the math for the two and a half times for, um, for the water. Oh, I'm sorry about the noise, guys. If you can hear, they're mowing the lawn outside. Ah, another benefit to someday when I have my own place. <laughs> there won't be people making noise outside. Oh, it's going to be a good day when that happens. And someday I'm going to have a property and you guys can all come to visit. And we'll do workshops and stuff. Won't that be cool? All right. Anyways, I'm getting distracted. So, I need two and a half times as much wait a second did I do that math right oh my goodness now I'm second guessing myself um so I have three poop all right we're starting over sorry sorry starting over here okay let me grab my gypsum again I'm gonna start with the water and I'm gonna add the gypsum to the water all right so if I want to have I'm gonna do one, I'm gonna do half a cup of water. Okay, now I remember why I did this. So I have a towel out so I can dry off the cup. Okay, and I'm gonna dry off the outside too because the powder will stick. So then I need two and a half times, so three times would be six cups so this I mean or and I'm saying cups as in scoops with the one quarter cup so I'm gonna put five quarters in here one oh and I'm gonna pull the cat hair out of there and I level off let me move this actually so you can see a little bit better and I level off the scoop just like you're baking with flour Kind of mix it around in the gypsum. So that's three. Tap that out. I just kind of sprinkle it around so that it's not all piled in the middle. And then one final one. And I leave, leave this one heaping a little because it actually works out to a 2.6 mixture. So I just add a little bit extra. I can always add more. It's better to have to add more powder than to add more water because I can screw up the mixture pretty quickly. All right, so now we have our mixture in here. I actually got a, a wooden spatula from Dollarama and I pull the spatula off and I use this as my stir. So then I just start to stir it, slowly kind of get it in there. 
And I'm gonna want, I'm gonna get lots of bubbles in here. I'm not super concerned. Like when I do resin, I don't want to stir fast and I don't want to kind of take the tool out and put it back in because it adds uh, air to the mixture. So what I wanna do is really just kind of stir and try to get all of those bumps to break down. Now I'm looking for a specific consistency and I'm gonna kind of show you um, when I've got it. If it's too watery, um, you're gonna end up with a really fragile um, consist, uh, finished product. So this is a little bit too watery. So see how, well, there's a couple lumps in there, of course. See how it's still pretty watery though? I don't know if you can see that. I want it just a little bit thicker, but not much. This stuff sets very quickly, so you want to be able to pour it fairly quickly. Actually, now that I get those couple lumps out, it actually looks pretty good. So there we go. So this is kind of the consistency, like a thin milkshake. Can you guys kind of see that? Okay. I wanna say that was excellent to put the water in first. When I made the mistake of putting powder in first, it was much harder to mix because it was all, yeah, it gets really gummy and, and kind of blech, right? Oh, you can't see messages today, Janice? Okay, well, I won't take it personal when you don't answer. <laughs> uh, that's cool. All right, now I am gonna get the end for my spatula though, and I'm gonna put it on the end, the other end. I'm going to scrape this off. And I get filthy when I do this. I don't care. I, I like getting dirty. It doesn't bother me at all. So I just wipe it on towels and paper towels, whatever I have left. So I've got my mold. Always make sure that before you use your mold, you clean them out and make sure they're really nice and dry. The water isn't gonna be as big of a deal, but it can create air bubbles um, on the other surfaces. Um, so just make sure that your mold is nice and clean. So then I'm going to just kind of start moving the mixture down here. You want to pour it fairly quickly. This is also why you don't want to make huge batches, right? When you pour it into your mold, you want to keep a close eye on it. I'm excited for this stone. So I haven't mixed anywhere near enough to do the tea light candle holder as well, and that's okay. So I'm going to underfill it first right so I'm not gonna fill it all the way to the top right away instead I want to just kind of see how it settles okay so see how it's just let me zoom in here a little bit see how it's just kind of under the edge that's kind of as far as I want to go maybe I can add just a little bit more in there but it's not gonna be a big deal if you over pour it's okay because what you're going to do after they set is you can actually sand them. Now you wanna pull them out of the mold fairly quickly um, so they dry. I pull them out of, at about three hours. I never use gloves when I'm doing gypsum. I only use gloves when I'm doing resin. I've never used gloves when I've done gypsum or plaster of Paris. And then I'm just gonna start tapping the mold. So I'm gonna do a combination because I wanna bring all of those bubbles up to the top. Can you guys see them? So I'm gonna do a, a mixture of tapping them on the table. So I apologize, this probably is gonna move the camera a bit. And also going around the sides and tapping the sides of the mold, right? Like this. Oh, this reminds me of the day that they stacked wood while I was doing this. That's all right, it is what it is. All right. much tighter than me then. <laughs> and I'm, I'm cheap AF. I don't want to buy extra gloves. I don't mind getting dirty to either. And then I just wipe everything down. All right, so I'm just gonna keep tapping. And I'm watching to see if there's new bubbles starting to come up. Now some people will take a paper towel and kind of tap it on the, on the surface to kind of pull some of those bubbles off, but you certainly don't have to. I've, I never have, and then I usually go to, um, I usually go and sand it at the end, right? 
All right, here we go. Ooh, tap, 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 tap. It's, you're gonna tap for quite a while, right? This is not a fast part of the process because I'm watching the edges over here. So when I tap, I'm looking to see if there's more bubbles coming up from the edge there. Okay. So I'm seeing a few new bubbles coming up. I know it's hard to see on camera, but I'm seeing a few new bubbles coming up. So then I just keep spinning it and keep tapping it. This is definitely a process. If you are messy and you don't like to get dirty, then definitely take Jan's advice and wear some gloves because this stuff does kind of get everywhere. It's, uh, it is very, can get very, very messy, especially when you're just practicing and getting used to it. Um, now let's see here. So this one's looking pretty good. Tap it a little bit more. Don't rush this process. Okay. You really want to get as many bubbles out as you possibly can. So I spend a lot of time doing this. And this is a new mold for me too. So I'm, I'm watching this mold to see where the bubbles tend to come from, right? So I'm watching all of these bubbles over here moving around. And then I'm coming over here to see if there's new ones popping up. And you can kind of start to see it. But again, once this cures and you pull it out of the mold, then you're, you can sand it. That's why you don't want to leave it in the mold like overnight. Because if you leave it overnight, it's going to be fully cured and really, really hard. And it's not going to be able to be sanded very easily. Right? If you can try it, you want to try and pull it out of the mold after about three hours. And then it should still sand very easily. Now with the gypsum powder, once it is cured and it is drying, you want to leave it, you have to leave it for a week before you can paint it. Okay. So you want to make these far enough in advance um, because you want them to be really, 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 really good and dry. So when I make these and sell them on the website, they do not go in the mail until it's been at least a week since the mixing happened. Okay. And if there's anybody here, if I've missed anybody, if you've already gone on and purchased a pendant, thank you so much. It was, it's been such a fun morning doing this launch. It was, it's been such a fun experience and it's what I'm definitely going to keep doing going forward. It's been it's been really, really fun, and I'm excited for the rest of the day, and I'm excited for the next one. It's gonna, I'm going to do a, a launch in the shop every two weeks. All right, so that should be pretty good. And again, like I said, if you want to, you can take a piece of wet paper towel and just kind of put it over top and pull off some of those, those bubbles if you, uh, if you want to. Now, I'm not too concerned if there's bubbles on the bottom here. Like I said, I'm going to sand it, but I'm also... Um, it's gonna be the bottom of the stone, so it's not that big of a deal. So then I'm just gonna set this aside. I'm gonna get it out of the way and put it somewhere secure that hopefully a cat won't knock it over. <laughs> we'll find out. And then we are going to see if I have enough left for the tea light candle holder mold. If I don't, then what I'm literally going to do is pull it right back at it. I don't think I'm going to have enough. I don't think I'm even going to try it. We'll do another mixture for the tea light candle holder. All right, so we're going to fill up. Let's fill up a stone. Here's one of the Happy Dotting Company stone molds. This is These are nice because they're very stable, so it makes it easy to tap them. So let's just use one of these guys, and then I'll mix another batch here. So it's kept its consistency, but again, you want to use it fairly quickly because it will start to dry. Plaster of Paris is even worse. You wait five minutes with Plaster of Paris and it is gonna to start to thicken to the point of it not being usable, okay? Plaster of Paris is good. Um, it is what I started with um, and it does a beautiful job. It makes beautiful stones. The thing that I didn't like about Plaster of Paris is that it is not as strong so um, I've had stones shipped to people that were made from plaster of Paris and had them literally crack in half. I use two cups pow uh, powder plus water and stick my gloves and hands in to mix. Oh yeah, that's a really good idea. And I've seen, I think Christina Lee does that as well. She uses her hands to mix the gypsum. And I totally, that would be, that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> 
And that for sure, I would definitely use gloves. 100% <laughs> I'd use gloves for that. So see how I'm just kind of slowly spinning this, right? And I'm tapping it. And then every once in a while, I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna tap it on the table. I'm so sorry for the motion on the, on the camera if it's jiggling a lot. And this one is a little different. So I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit. See, watch this edge right here. You'll see some bubbles start to come up. See those little ones just popping up in there that are right by the edge? They're very, very subtle, but there we go. See those bubbles right by the edge? That's what we're looking for, right? We're gonna keep spinning until we don't have a lot of those bubbles coming up. Now there's a lot of artists out there that as long as the bubbles are on the bottom, they don't really, they don't really care and that's okay. Um, I tend to pull my design around the bottom. So if you, for example, let me pull one of my other stones out here. Oh, I gotta reach to a spot that's not very convenient here. All right, now it's black, but it's not as easy, not too hard to see. So see how there's really no bubbles along the edge here? Cause I like to pull my designs down a lot of the times there's a couple little bubbles here and there, but nothing too, too major. Um, so it's completely up to you of how long you wanna do this process and what you're gonna be okay with. Um, trial and error really is the best advice that I can give you because you gotta get some muscle memory in there, right? You gotta figure out what works for you and what doesn't work for you. And you got to just kinda see what it is that you like. Now, is that a bubble or is that a piece of animal fur? That's animal fur. Yeah, you get a piece of the farm and a stone then. So be it. All right. So there's still little bubbles coming up there, so I'm going to keep spinning. I'm going to... Sometimes I'll even grab it by these edges here and give it a little bit of a bang. But you got to be okay with making some noise. And you got to be okay with taking your time. All right, but that one looks pretty good. So same, I could take the paper towel and I could pull up those little bubbles that are sitting on the top there, the frothiness. Um, but I'm gonna just sand them off when it's all said and done. So with the leftover gypsum that I have, instead of making another uh, blank tea light candle holder, I'm gonna just fill this in here. So I'm just gonna pull all of the leftover stuff out of this little bowl of mine. And it's starting to get really, really thick and really goopy. So this is gonna be much more difficult to get any bubbles out because it's already starting to thicken on me here. On this mold, I tend to make a real mess too because I just kind of slop it on and then tap it in and then whatever's hovering on the, on the surface, I'll move it around into an empty, in an empty cavity there. I'm just trying to get as much of this out of the bowl as I possibly can. Cleaning the bowls are a royal pain, okay? What I find the easiest is to let the bowls completely dry and let all the gypsum that's in the bowls completely dry. Use flexible kind of Tupperware type bowls because then you can crack, kind of bend them and squish them a little bit and, and crack the, the dried plaster once, once it's done. So see, I'm gonna just try and kind of stuff the, extras into these spots here and I still I didn't even need to do all three that's all right I might even be able to scrape some extra out of the having a small a mold like this that has some small stones in it is really really helpful to be able to use up some of these little extras right Everybody doing okay so far? Does anybody have any questions? All right, there we go. And then for this one, I'm just gonna, same thing. I'm gonna tap them. I'm gonna start to see some bubbles coming up. Don't worry if your molds aren't pretty, like these cut edges here aren't super pretty. They don't need to be, right? It's the other, the rest of the stone. This is just gonna be what, what causes the bottom of your, um, like the base of your stone, and you can sand that off. 
So just tapping. The thicker it is, the harder and longer you need to tap it because there's a much higher chance that there's gonna be bubbles that are stuck in there that aren't gonna move very well, right? If the, if the plaster's already started to thicken. Okay. I love this mold. I'm, I can't wait to order more stuff from her. She's got some beautiful molds and Devin Dotting has some really cool molds for like tall pillar candle holders, uh, incense holders, um, all kinds of cool stuff. And Happy Dotting Company, it, Happy Dotting Company is where I started uh, with their molds. Um, and then kind of branch out from there. I think Electric Mandala has some molds as well that she sells, that Lucy sells. Other great spots to get some supplies. Um, Daughter Depot is fantastic. Lots of tools, lots of stencils. She has molds as well, Dot Art Depot. Um, she has the, the paint bottles, the squeeze bottles that I use that are kind of like the henna bottles. Um, and uh, Jessie D Designs, she's in Australia, but she makes some really, really cool, really small Lazy Susans for painting small things like the candle holders. It's really, really cool. Now, uh, if you're in Canada and you want a big Lazy Susan, go to Canadian Tire. You can get Bamboo Lazy Susans for $13.99 there. I think I'm, it might even have been $11. And that's what I use for my canvases. All right, so there we go. Tapped away. Hope you guys aren't too dizzy from all of the, the movement there. So then I literally just set this aside for three hours. And then if you touch it and you still have any kind of wetness coming out of there you're going to know whether it's not cured enough or not because it's going to be solid okay so then i'm just gonna oops zoom out a little bit so you guys aren't looking right up the nose of this stuff I'm just give my hands a little bit of a, a wash And then I'll show you. So I've never made the heart mold before, but I'm really, 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 really excited to try it. Um, I love my other heart mold too. And I love the idea of having two different kinds of hearts to be able to, to paint on. It's so addictive, you guys. But mold, um, casting your own stones, it's not for everybody. It, it might not be something that you enjoy. So like with everything that I always tell you guys, if you don't enjoy it, don't force yourself to do it, right? There's lots of people that'll do it for you. Um, and then there, but if you enjoy doing it, it can be really, really fun. It can be really enjoyable. All right. So that's kind of it for gypsum. Do you guys have any questions about the gypsum process? Use the outside hose. Yes, that's a really good. I think I'm so used to have be, having to do everything in my apartment. I forget that stuff exists. <laughs> so it's always good if you if you have a home and you've got um, you've got an outdoor hose. Cleaning everything out. It's just like cleaning out your paints, right? You don't want to put that through, down through your sink if you don't have to, especially not in large amounts. And you certainly don't want to do it with the gypsum cement because it will dry out and clog up your, your drains and everything and could cause some damage, right? So if you're able, anything you're able to do outside, um, that's what you want to do. Hey, Michelle. All right, just taking a sip of my tea. Does anybody have any questions about the gypsum? Wait three hours and then you just pull them out of the molds. Pulling them out of the molds is not graceful. You just kind of have to fight with it. But the nice thing again about the gypsum is, is it's so much stronger than plaster of Paris. If you're using plaster of Paris, I've had lots of times where I've pulled stuff out of the molds and cracked them right in half. And of course I just kind of pat myself on the back a little bit. I'm like, yes, yeah, so strong, right? <laughs> but <laughs> it's not me. It's just a weak product. But it, like I said, it can work really well and it's really nice to paint on. The other benefit that I like to, um, with the gypsum, is that it is not as dusty. Um, there's a lot of dust with Plaster of Paris and it's not anywhere near as dusty with the gypsum. Um, now the disadvantage is it's heavier, right? So if you are 
looking to ship them anywhere, it's going to cost you more for shipping um, to do that with uh, with gypsum as opposed as opposed to plaster of Paris. But it kind of almost evens out because in my mind, if I'm using plaster of Paris, I need to use more shipping materials to pad it, like extra bubble wrap, extra space, extra potential paper stuffed in there. So the weight difference shouldn't be too, too much but it, it's still there. Um, the gypsum is also safe um, if you, even if, if you don't seal it, you can put it outside. Plaster of Paris will crumble. Um, I'm sure that there are sealers out there that you could put on the plaster of Paris that would make it um, suitable to go outdoors and be weather safe. But I would just be nervous because what if there's that one little weak spot in the, in the coverage that you know, lets a little bit of moisture in there and then the whole thing disintegrates. With the with the gypsum, very easy to do. Now I've, so you can, you can finish it, you can stick it outside and in very little risk that something's gonna happen to it. Now the other thing that I've um, made uh, stones with too is just quickcrete, quickcrete cement. Now it's a lot thicker, um, so you want to, if you mix it too thick, you're not going to get a lot of bubbles. So if you're getting a lot of bubbles when you mix quickcrete, try adding a little bit more water, making it a little bit more of a, a half-melted milkshake consistency as opposed to too, too thick. Um, so keep that in mind too, okay? Hello, Belbeer. How are you? It's so good to see you. And I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much for asking. All right, we ready to play with some resin then? Anybody have any other questions about the gypsum? If you do, just keep asking. Um, and then we're gonna try here with the resin. So, this is my mixing, silicone mixing uh, beaker. And it's got measurements on the sides, which is very, very convenient, okay? And then these little measuring cups, these were a gift from Jan. Thank you, Jan. I still haven't ran out. I, I can't bring myself to throw these out. These are almost like those, um, you know, when you get uh, some cough medicine and they've got the little cups that have the measurements on them, very much like those. And I save those too, right? Oh, thank you. Thank you for the love, Belbeer. Sending it right back to you. So when you are using art resin, now I don't know anything about any other resin. This is really, really important. This is the only resin that I have ever worked with, okay? And I'm still relatively new, all things considered. This is like less than 10 times me using this stuff, okay? So if you want to try using something like it's an epoxy, I know Mod Podge has a resin out now that I'm, I'm hoping to try too. Please make sure you read the directions and read the safety instructions. Not all resins are created equal and certainly not with epoxies. They are typically the epoxies, um, the, you know, the stuff that you see people doing the large pours on tables, um, in, in very deep pours and everything. There's different kinds of resin depending on what you want to use it for. So you know those people who will make the resin pyramids? They use a specific type of resin that is supposed to be good for deep pores, right? So not a lot of bubbles. That's how they get that crystal clear finish in there. Now, the resin that I'm using is not meant for really deep pores. It's meant for if you have a canvas and you want to cover the canvas in resin, right, to, to give it a finish, or you want to do something thin like I've done with my pendants. Now, when I did my incense holders, what you can't see in here is see how it's kind of milky in there? That's all bubbles, right? Because the resin that I used is not meant for deep pores like this. I mean, it still looks beautiful and it still looks great and it's still gonna function fine. But if you want that crystal clear look when you go through it, you need to make sure you're using the right kind of resin. Now, epoxies and um, some of the other resins, you need to have like ventil ventilator masks on them, like with the, with the great big nozzle thingies on, on the mouthpieces, um, making sure you're always wearing gloves. This stuff does not dry quickly, so it's not like the gypsum where if you get some on you, or like glue, if you get some on you, you can kind of pull it off. Doesn't work that way. Once it's on you, it's on you for a while, and it can be very, very toxic. If you have animals around, make sure you're keeping your animals away from it. You don't want them ingesting it. And again, keeping an eye on what brand you're using to know whether it's going to have a high odor or not. 
So I, where I do my artwork right now is inside the house. It's an extension of the house, but it's still inside the house and it doesn't have great ventilation. So I'm never going to use anything other than the resin that I have, or if I am able to find another low odor resin, then I will do that in the home. Otherwise, um, my ultimate goal is to eventually get a shed that will be like my, um, my resin shed eventually to be able to go and, and ventilate it and be able to use other, other types of resin and epoxies and everything. So um, when you buy it, it comes in multiple sizes. Um, I should put a link on my, I'm an Amazon affiliate now, so if you want to order it off of Amazon, I should put a link on there um, so you can find it on my site. I've put paints and stuff, but I haven't put the resin yet, so I will. Um, you've got hardener and you've got resin. So you want to mix these in exactly equal parts, okay? And this is the company name, Art Resin. So if you want to look at their website, there's tons of information there and tons of different videos on, on their products and how to use it and instructional stuff like that, okay? Um, keep lots of paper towel handy. That can be really good for cleaning out your, your, um, your cups and cleaning up anything um, really quickly. So I have a few things that I need to cover in resin. So I'm gonna mix quite a bit of this stuff. I'm gonna mix an ounce of each and we're gonna see how far it takes us, <laughs> okay? You can mix as much of it or as little of it as you want. I just hate the thought of potentially wasting it. So I'd rather mix too little and then have to go in and mix more. Now it's got, you can work with this for about 45 minutes. So it's a lot better than the gypsum or the plaster of Paris. You've got a lot of working time with resin. So um, if you don't use it all, you can always go back in and add more to it. So I keep one cup for resin and one for hardener. While you're using them, if you think you're gonna have to go back in and do them again, make sure you know which one is which. Right, so you could take a Sharpie, you could write it on the bottom. Why don't we do that with this one? So I'm gonna use an H for hardener and an R for resin. So I just wrote that on the bottom with my Sharpie. Okay, so I'm going to set this back a little bit so you can actually see me do this and then I'll bring in closer. I literally get right down here and just watch watch what I'm doing to see where it's going to end up. It reminds me of the old science classes where you had to watch your measurements. Now I'm not super, super picky about what exactly I'm putting in the cup, right? Like I, I don't really care that if, if it's exactly two tablespoons. What I really care about though is when I get my hardener ready that I am using as close to exactly the same amount of hardener as resin as humanly as I possibly can. So if I'm looking at the two tablespoon side of this, I want to at least be able to reference it right beside it. And I get right down in here and pour this in. And it'll kind of keep moving a little bit once you stop pouring. So that is pretty darn close to exactly the same amount. So it's been sitting in hot water for about 20 minutes. Okay, and now I'm gonna bring you in closer again. Uh, definitely don't wanna make too much. Resin is um, one of those more, very much so, right? Like I think um, I had taller bottles and I want to say that they were at least 30 or $40 for, and I mean, it depends on what you're making with it too, how far you're going to be able to spread it, right? And make it last. With resin, with my, my pendants, I can make it stretch really far. If I was doing a whole bunch of incense holders, I'd go through it super, super, super fast. Okay, so I'm going to pour both of these in there. Now I'm using a... Um, a popsicle stick to stir. Now, um, it, it definitely is recommended that if you can get yourself a silicone stir stick to use that instead of the popsicle stick. Um, now, if I was using, if I was making incense holders or something that I was going to ha have to be a little bit more tougher with the bubbles, like just doing the thin coat that I'm going to do on my pendants, I don't have to be quite as picky and I, and the, the blowtorch will 
catch most of the bubbles. Um, but you do really want to try and stir with a silicone stir stick if you can, okay? Why was it sitting in hot water? That's a really good question. It was sitting in hot water to help bring some of the bubbles up to the surface so that it's not as bubbly when you mix it. Now, after you stir it and mix these two parts together, you can always stick it back in some hot water again a little bit because stirring is going to create some bubbles, right? So if you want to do that before you go pouring anything, you definitely, definitely can. The only reason I'm not gonna do that today is because I'm doing the pendants and they're so tiny and thin anyway that like I said, the, the blowtorch kind of catches them. Um, but if I was going to be covering a painting, for example, I would put the mixture back into water for about another 10 or 15 minutes to be able to get out as many bubbles as I possibly could. And you wanna try and scrape out as much of it as you can, because again, you want it to be as close to an exact mixture as you can, okay? Now, I'm going to start stirring, and what you're gonna cut, you might be able to see, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, it's almost gonna look like there's fibers in here. So see how it kind of looks almost fibrous and almost pearlescent? I don't know if you can see that or not. So we're gonna stir this nice and slowly for about two to three minutes. So talk amongst yourselves, ask some questions. What do we wanna talk about? But you wanna do it fairly slowly. You don't wanna kind of get in there and whisk it up or anything. You wanna stir it fairly slowly. And then every once in a while, I'll put it down on the table and just use my popsicle stick to scrape the sides and just give it a nice slow stir. Jade, if you spray 91% rubbing alcohol into your mold and on top of the resin, it'll pop the bubbles. Oh, awesome, Jade, thank you for that. Where do you get 91%? I've never been able to find higher than 70. Where would I even find that? I've checked the drug stores, I've checked everywhere. Where would I get that? I wonder if that's something I'll have to order off of Amazon too. I'll put it on the Amazon list. But that's great advice, thank you for sharing. So I'm just gonna keep stirring. And we learn as we go, right? So when you're learning, anytime you're learning something new, you have to kind of go into it assuming that you're gonna screw it up a lot, right? Walmart and CVS in the States, okay. There you go, Jan. Fantastic, I love this. Everyone's sharing what they know. I'll definitely have another look and see if I can find it. I haven't checked Walmart yet, but I've tried the drugstores because I assumed that that's where I'd find it. But I'll, I'll take a look because i got to go to Walmart tomorrow. Finn, stop. <laughs> that's the polar bear saying hello. Now, this still does have some odor. It's not odorless. It's just low odor. So I'm, I'm definitely not going to stir this right under my nose, right? I'm not gonna spend time breathing in a ton. And again, if I was going to be doing a lot, I really wanna make sure that if I was doing a high volume that I have a silicone stir stick, having a look maybe at Michael's or on Amazon or something to see what they've got. Um, there's all kinds of different stuff out there. All kinds of cool tools out there. Jan sent me a great little package that had all the, has all these little pipettes. Where's one of them? I don't want to stop stirring for too long here, but she sent me these that have these little pipettes that you can kind of pull some resin out there. And then these are little, I call them little finger condoms, but they're little finger gloves. So if you don't want to wear the full gloves, you can do that too. <laughs> I make epoxy tumblers and figurines. Oh, cool, Jade. That's awesome. Well, please let me know if I'm telling you anything, <laughs> if, you, if I'm relaying any information that is blatantly incorrect, okay? So I'm still waiting. It's still kind of pearly. It's not clear yet. It's still got these little string. It almost looks like there's little strings. They remind me very much of the strings if you're a Harry Potter fan that, that Dumbledore pulls out of his mind and puts in the pensive. It kind of reminds me of that. So still stirring. Still scraping the sides. Like with anything, I started to say a second ago that, you know, like with anything, you really want to 
go into it knowing, hey, I might screw up a lot, right? You have to be okay with trying and having it not work out, right? I kind of liken it to going to the casino or going to bingo. If I'm going to go, I have to be totally okay with spending this 50 bucks and coming away with nothing in return because you're always going to learn something from it. Even if you learn that it's too frustrating and you don't like it and you don't want to do it anymore, right? That's still valuable. Rob buys 99% alcohol. Okay, I will. Thanks, Rach. That's awesome, hun. Thank you. I will definitely have a look. I probably was just not looking in the right spot. So hopefully I'll find something tomorrow, but I'll definitely keep you posted. So now we're getting, we're getting closer to clear. Still not quite. I usually put on a song and I'll find a song that I like that's a few minutes long. I know I've been talking to and stopping, right? So that's not helping the situation. There we go. We're getting there. Is Brianna here? Hi. Ah, oh, thank you, Brianna. You lovely nerd. Yeah, Rachel's on here. How cool is that? So for anybody who doesn't know, <laughs> Rachel and Brianna. So um, Rachel and I used to work for the same company uh, when I lived in St. John, New Brunswick. Um, I moved back from St. John, New Brunswick to Ontario um, in 2012. So we've been friends for a very, very long time. Anytime I go to New Brunswick, that's where I stay. I stay with Rachel. Staying with anybody else is just not even not even in the cards. Not even an option. Not even anything I want to consider, to be brutally honest. I just, just like, if I'm not going to stay with Rachel, I'm not going. And so, but she used to come and travel up here because she still works for the company that I, that I used to work for. And she used to come and travel. So she would pop up here and she got to come up and, and do some training with Brianna, who was working at one of the dealerships that I worked with. Um, so it's so nice to have two friends get to know each other and, uh, and enjoy each other as much as I enjoy them. All right, so I'm going to move one of these sections of paper towel out of the way. I'm a big fan of these. And I go through a lot of paper towel when I'm working with resin. But I'm going to move this out to the side. And I've got my little, my resin pendants that I need to do some touch-up pours on. So I have these little plastic shot glass type thingies. Would it matter if it's 91 or 99? Uh, Jade, would that matter? Or is it just something that's higher than 90? Is it just something that's a nice high percentage? So I have these little plastic shot glass thingies that I use to set my stuff on. I'd even use two or three of these if I was going to do like a Christmas ornament or a disc or something like that. So you want to find something that you can set them on top of that are going to be stable enough. I put this uh, eight inch canvas underneath because then I'm going to be able to move it later because what I what I didn't want to do was to have to set up and then leave this stuff sitting in the exact same spot for the next 24 hours because I've got other stuff I want to do here and I only have a certain amount of space. Either will work. Okay, thanks, Jade. So you're good with either, Jan. Um, so I didn't want to have to set this up here, pour it, and leave it, right? A lot of times I'll do my resin pours on Saturday evenings because then, or late Saturday afternoon, so this is still convenient for me uh, because then I'll give myself the evening off on Saturday and then I go in to do a bunch of stuff for my mom and dad. So I'm gone most of the day on Sunday. So by the time I get back, it's at least movable. Um, but I did do this uh, today so that I can move it and do some more painting later this afternoon and this evening. So um, I've got a couple of spots over here that are set up to cover my resin. So this is a mold that will fill after. I'm going to do these first, and then whatever I have left over will fill in here. Um, and then I've got this Tupperware that sits right over top of it that will help keep the dust and anything out of it. And then this box is what is going to go on top of this once I move this back over into that corner. So I've got those different spots that I'll kind of move them in and you can watch me flounder with that a little bit later and have little mini heart attacks, I'm sure. All right, let me move this bottle of water out of here and close it. All right, so what I'm doing on here is I had some uh, overflow, right? So I have these pendants that I make in that white mold that I just show you and it comes out of that little mold 
looking like these little discs here. And you see where the light is reflecting around the edge? It's almost got a little bit of a lip in there. That little lip is perfect for holding the resin in, right? If this was a perfectly flat edge, it would be very difficult to keep all of the resin on top and not have it run over on the sides. So people who are doing larger pieces, if they're not using molds to make what they're doing, um, they could tape it off, they could use um, liquid latex or masking fluid, um, masking, putting masking tape on the bottom, um, and that can help with over pour. So what happened with these ones is I over poured a little bit. It ran underneath to the bottom. So after I paint them, I pour them on top and it creates this nice kind of domed effect. I don't know if you can kind of see that there, but it over poured a little bit. So I just, I'm just turning this back and I'm going to just put another little layer on here. If you just need to top coat on something, you can also try a product called Crystal Lac. It's non-toxic water-based. Uh, and can be applied and cleaned up with your bare hands. You'll likely need several coats, but you can add it every four hours. Jade, amazing. Thank you. That is so helpful. Thank you so much. Totally going to look for that. I'm going to just take a quick sip of my tea here before we keep going. Everybody doing okay? Anybody have any questions? We doing all right? All right, so I'm just going to add a little bit more in here. I've sanded a couple of these because they were um, just kind of grungy and I wanted a nice smooth surface. But this is how I do it. Now, like every tutorial, you guys are probably getting tired of hearing me say this going, I don't know if it's the right way or the wrong way, but it's the way that I figured out that has worked for me, so I'm going to keep doing it. Um, is it possible to put a cork on the discs and make wine bottle toppers? I don't see why not. That's totally possible. Now these are about the size of a toonie. Would they be too big? Now you can pour directly out of this. I've found that that's when I tend to over pour. So um, you could use those little pipettes. Um, they cause some bubbles sometimes too. So but with something something this thin you could probably easily get away with with using those little pipettes. Um, I'm actually going to just make a mess and dip in my popsicle stick and use it to guide the resin on the top. And once I've got that on there, I'm gonna get one finger really, really dirty and use my finger to kind of move it out and around. Now, resin is self-leveling, which is nice. And then if you get it out to the edges, oops, got some gunk on there. Right? And then you can always run your fingers around the edge to keep it nice and smooth. And then I'm going to set it back down. Oh, there's a little, little bit in there. There we go. So I'm just going to add these little bits of resin to the backs of these ones. And if you don't want to stick your finger in it, you can just use another stick and just kind of move stuff around a little bit to just put kind of that little bit of a coating on it, right? So just slowly, this is where I tend to hold my breath and get really, really quiet. <laughs> I've had a lot of people asking me um, if these could go on pop sockets as well. Um, I've never had any success finding blank pop sockets at a decent price here in Canada. Um, if anybody knows of a supplier, that would be interesting. And letting me know too, would anybody be willing to pay $25 for a pop socket? Right, because that's kind of where I'm at for pricing for these. And whether it's a necklace pendant or a pop socket, the pricing would be the same because it's the exact same thing, right? Do people pay that kind of money for pop sockets? Because if that's possible, then maybe that's something I should consider. Yeah. Right, so I'm just kind of moving this around and I'm trusting that it's going to kind of self-level there. Okay. 
Oh, very cool, Rach. We'll have to we'll have to do some brainstorming. So I'm just gonna use this again. There we go. I'm gonna set that there. And then just slowly go in. And push it towards the edge. Very much like coloring. Oops. Sorry guys, this is where I'm going to get really quiet for a few minutes while I kind of get this in and around here. It's a very slow process, for me anyway. Jade, how long have you been working with epoxy now? What got you into it? Now, once I get these all poured, I'm going to cover them like I showed you. And I'm going to let them sit for 24 hours before I touch them. But I am going to go in with my blow torch. I've got a culinary torch. Another gift from Jan. She's totally supporting my resin habit here. So, um, and the torch will help with bubbles as well. So I've got this little butane torch. And then I'm gonna go here. I'm just gonna give it a quick little, and it can't really see it on camera, but it's pulling up some of those bubbles. And then you go back about 15 minutes later and see if there's anything else there that you need to check on and go from there. Oh, thank you, Brianna. Rachel's Rocks makes and sells a bunch. Uh, maybe check with her. Uh, like you, she's not afraid to share. Okay, I'll definitely take a look. Thanks, Jan. A couple years. I like making keychains. If I can, though, I will choose Crystalac any day of the week, though. Just doesn't work with molds. Ah, gotcha. Gotcha. So it'd be a good one to have to do this part of my process. Do the first one with, with resin and then go back in with the Crystalac. That could make for less headaches, maybe. Now this one, the reason I'm putting more on this one is because um, I had some rough edges. I didn't put enough on in the first one to make that nice domed effect. So I'm just putting that in there. When you're using the molds, um, at least when I'm using my, my molds, I found that I, I don't really have the skill yet to know how to not get the lip on the side of things. And I've been okay with it because the stuff that I've made is perfectly fine to have the lip and it's been helpful. But just do lots and lots of research. Really rely on YouTube. Ask lots of questions of other people that are doing stuff. You know, there are, there are a lot of people who don't want to share what they're doing, but there's a lot of people that do, right? So find the ones that aren't trying to be gatekeepers. Ask questions and devour as much information as you can. And always remember that you can find so much on YouTube. So, so, so much on YouTube. How do you like making the tumblers? Is it fun? It looks really, really intense when I see videos on TikTok for it. Huge cat hair stuck here. There we go. Oh, I just dropped it right back in. <laughs> it was stuck to that other pendant. <laughs> Oops, and I just dripped right down the side of that. So, this is what I'm going to do. Oop. You, I do this a lot. Stuff gets ruined. It happens. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. I can always make it again, right? Doesn't mean I'm happy about it, but it's possible. 
I always find it really satisfying. I'll show you with the one at the front when you when it when it's been sanded and then you put the resin over top and it just pulls out the color. It's really cool. It's really neat. Let's see. So I'm looking around the edges to try and see if I'm actually getting the resin all the way out to the edge because I want to again have that kind of domed effect, right? And so if you kind of get it, coax it towards the edge, it's it's coaxing it, it's not forcing it, right? Because if you force it, then you've got a much higher chance of it going over the edge. Right? I'm just kind of coaxing it around the edge there. And there we go. Taking the time, taking our time. So we'll have lots left over, which is cool. So we'll be able to fill up some of the mold. So to make the black, I mix in some black acrylic paint um, and that creates the black base. Same with the white, I mixed in some white acrylic paint. I've done some clear ones as well and they're pretty. They, they've all turned out really nice. So maybe one of these days too, I'll try some other colors too, but for now I'm just sticking with, for now I'm just sticking with the black and the white and the clear. Mostly black. Black is still my favorite background to paint dot mandalas on. I find they just pop so nicely. But there's lots of people doing lots of different colors, so it's easy to get inspired by what other people are doing, too. Let's see here. I use crystal lock for the tumblers now too. Epoxy occasionally if I need certain technique. There's a lot of direction, directions to go with tumblers. I can't even imagine. That's so cool. You'd never get bored, right? I use my beautiful, oh, are you? Oh, I'm so glad you like it. Isn't it gorgeous? <laughs> yeah, you gotta love glitter, eh? Totally gotta love glitter. But my God, they look so friggin' cool. Do you have like the spinners and everything all set up? I totally have to check out your tumblers. All right, so now I'm moving on to my next row. So I'm just gonna torch it again. Here we go. All right. There's nothing wrong with the backs of a couple of a couple of these. They just are a little gummy from around where I glued the the bale onto. Um, see, Jan, I changed it. I, I went with the bale so that I didn't have to say the gross word. Um, so I'm I'm just kind of covering it up there to make it look a little bit nicer and hopefully be a little bit smoother and just to make it look prettier. I've been totally addicted to my 90s music playlist on my on my Apple Music. It takes my whole library and just gives me all of my 90s stuff and I've been oh, reliving <laughs> Re reliving the 90s lately. But it's been so fun. Every once in a while I go onto the generated playlist and pull out a bunch of music that I'd forgotten about. Rachel, if you're still here, Amber is now at Clarington Hyundai too. She moved from Ontario Motor Sales over to Hyundai. So that's exciting news. You totally noticed, okay, good. Oh, I'm so glad you love it. So Janice, once your pendant's ready, you'll get some of that blue too, my dear. I gotta get Jerry Lynn's address too. She uh, She's the other person who wanted some of it. The blue that I'm talking about, you guys, if you are in Canada at Dollarama, the acrylic craft paints that is called Peacock Blue. Oh, sugar. There's the hair and it's right in there. There we 
go. Got it. No, I didn't. I'm gonna get the tweezers. There we go. Now we got it. It's called Peacock Blue, and it's just such a beautiful, brilliant color of blue. It's hands down, I think, my favorite paint. Like if I could only work with one color, I would work with it happily. Whoop. Slowly moving it around. Slowly, slowly. <coughs> Slowly, slowly. Very, very meticulous. All right. If you guys are members of the Facebook group, I want to thank you guys. We're at almost 400 members. It's crazy. Jerry Lynn's here lurking in the back. You've made me want some color shift paint too. <laughs> so sneaky. Jerry Lynn, so sneaky. Yeah, you'll totally love it, Janice. It's so nice. If you guys aren't following Jerry Lynn, go follow her. Go find Fire Child with an E on the end on TikTok and Instagram. She does the most beautiful glass art, blown glass. Um, and she's a Dot Mandela artist too. She's so freaking talented, you guys. Yes, Michelle, at Dollarama. It is this stuff here, Peacock Blue. Best blue ever. Let's see here. Uh, dollar Store, yeah, they totally work well. Um, now they're not gonna work well on um, like mugs or anything like that because you need specific multi-surface paints for those. But if you're just doing canvas or stones or painting on wood panels or something, Dollarama paints work just fine. Most of my paints, a lot of, not most anymore. I guess I've been kind of getting some other ones now. Uh, but I have a lot of dollar store paints. A lot, a lot, a lot. Any of the craft acrylic paints are going to work. Now, the one thing to just keep in mind is that when you are buying less expensive paints, you are running the risk that they're not going to be great quality. But, you know, um, there's always something you can use them for, right? If they're too thin, you can use them for backgrounds. You can buy gel medium to add to them to thicken them. Um, if they're too thick, you can add some water or some pouring medium to thin them out. Um, I find that for these pendants, they work really, really well simply because they are a little bit thinner. So doing tiny, tiny, delicate, fine designs works really, really well with slightly thinner paint. If it's too thick, it spreads too much and the dots run together and it's not super easy to do a lot of really tiny, delicate work with it. So um, now, and all that being said, I have had more issue with apple barrel paints than I have ever had with dollar store paints. Ever, ever, ever. Apple barrel to me um, is the wateriest and it's the one that I've had the most problems with getting a good consistency. When it's too watery, one of the things that can happen, and this is where it comes to, you know, using it for little delicate projects as opposed to the big ones, is, um, it, when you're using them to make larger dots, it can crack as it dries, right? So cracking as it dries is definitely a problem. Let me go back over these guys again, right? Uh, what's the best for the mugs? Multi-surface acrylic paint. So it's going to say multi-surface right on the bottle. I've got a bottle of it here. Multi-surface acrylic paints. Um, they are not all created equal. They will all have different baking instructions potentially. So make sure that you have a look on the back and look at the um, drying instructions, uh, the curing instructions, sorry, um, so that you know uh, if you're using multiple brands, different brands on one project, you'll know um, if your baking and curing instructions are going to kind of coincide. If they don't, 
You can always try baking, but I found that sometimes when the paints are a little bit different and have those different instructions, then I can get some bubbles on the on the mugs. Um, so air curing is always an option, but multi-surface paints do not fully air cure f until it's been 21 days. Um, but it's an option. There are some artists out there that will literally have it sit for 21 days because they don't want to risk bubbling with the um, with baking and I totally get it. The other issue with melty surface paints and, and baking is if you mix your own colors, you're going to increase the chance of bubbles at the time of baking. So you want to make sure that you let your paints fully dry or not fully dry because that's 21 days, but you let your paints dry for a good 24 hours. So if you're gonna put top dots, for example, 24 hours between each of the dots before you put your top dots on. Um, 24 hours again then after your final top dot until uh, before you bake it, right? Does that make sense? Bye, Michelle. Sorry, I missed a bunch here. Yeah. Oh, the Pacific Blue. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of great colors. A lot of great colors. Take care of yourself, Michelle. It was good seeing you. Janet, you got to buy um, a Pacific Blue so that we can see what it looks like. Okay, I will. Is it? Is it this one? No, I've got Tropical Blue. I'll look for Pacific Blue the next, when, when they open up again and I can get to the paint tiles again. No. I'll, I, there's some colors that Apple Barrel has that I really, 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 really like. Um, but I'll actually use them to mix with other stuff if I have to. Yeah, Folk Art, um, Deco Art are the, the best ones. Folk Art would be my first choice. Martha Stewart is really good as well, but I know that there's they're not really around much, but Apple Barrel's not, not the best. Yeah, watery and clumpy at the same time. Yeah, it's a real pain. Oh, you're most welcome. All right, I'm gonna zoom you guys in for this one because see how it's all sanded there? This is This is the part that I find satisfying. Watch when I drop on some of the resin. Isn't that cool? So freaking cool. And of course I got it on the edge. That's okay. Whoop. Question at all. Let's see how much more I need on here. Probably not too much. Let me just move it around and get it out to the edge. Ooh. Apologizing right now for the silence while I do this one. <laughs> Isn't that cool? This one I had to do because I had cured a cat hair into it on the original one. So I sanded it out and then put the other coat on top and now it should be good. Mm. Trying so hard not to have this go over the edge. I'm sure there are easier ways to do this. I, I don't, you guys that know me know I don't like to make my own life very easy. And I'm not hating the process, so I'm not really terribly motivated to find something different to do for it, right? That's the other part of it. If you're enjoying it and you're not hating the process, who cares? So I'm going to get this over to the edge a bit more and then I'll come back and catch up on the comments here. So I know this is a little bit different tutorial than what I normally do, but I hope that it's helpful for you guys. Sometimes just seeing other people do stuff will say, yeah, I want to try and no, I don't, right? That can help too. Let me scroll back. That's okay, Christy. 
You're getting your fist. What? <laughs> oh, love you, Rachel. I'll talk to you soon. I'm so glad you were here. Oh, your first shot. Oh, good for you. We got the same, um, we get the same effect when cold, uh, working on glass, aka okay, grinding it on a lathe, several different grits until we get to full polish. That'd be so satisfying. Can I request a pendant with the cat hair? Absolutely. I'll send it to you with the hoodie of Daisy in space riding a T-Rex. <laughs> Daisy is, for those of you who don't know, Daisy is a cat that's here on the farm, and she likes to sit on my lap while I'm painting. Uh, Audrey, does, my cat, does not want to sit on my lap, like, ever, really. <laughs> and uh, there, I put up a post the other day of on Instagram of of her sitting on, Daisy sitting on my lap while I was painting, and she was just glaring at the camera, and Jerry Lynn thought that she was part of the design on my hoodie. I'm like, well, now I need a hoodie with Daisy on it. So we're going to put her in space riding a T-Rex. And that sell hoodies with that. And I think, I think that's what's going to help me pay for my tiny house. Because I don't know about you guys, but I'd buy the crap out of something like that. All right, there we go. Here we go. Now I'm going to just kind of hold this a little bit and run my finger around the edge because there's a little bit of run over. Oh, and there's a little bit that I missed. So I'm going to go back in for a sec. Now it's on the back, so it's not a huge deal. I've got to figure out a way to dot my initials on the back of these pendants because I have yet to figure out a way to do to put my initials on these pendants without oh this one ran too that's all right Oop. all right and the worst thing that's going to happen is that i have to do this pendant over right that's the worst thing that's going to happen when it's something small like this it's not quite as devastating Get the bubbles. Do another quick little once over here. And now I'm going to get these guys covered. So that I'm going to actually pick this one up and pull some more of this off. I'm just wiping it on a paper towel. And there we go. All right. Right? Yeah, pet hair and absolutely everything. Yes, yeah, so I make the bases with resin. I'm actually going to mix some black paint into um, the rest of the resin that I have, and we're going to pour some into the mold. So I'll show you um, how I make the bases, and then I paint on them, and then I put resin over top of them to seal the paint uh, and protect the design underneath. So bear with me here. You guys might as well be able to be entertained by this too. Let's see how slow I have to do this, and let's see if I can do it without dropping anything. Fair warning that if I do drop anything, I probably will cry. As long as you're okay with seeing me cry. Woo. <sighs> okay. Whew. Holy Jesus, and there's a spider on the box. Oh my God. <sighs> okay. I don't have my spider kit in here. So I'm sorry, spider. How am I going to get you out of here? Ah! Ah! Oh, great. You're under the table now. I can't find you. Oh, oh good. Oh. All right. Well, I guess I will see him later. Oh, great. Well, all right. Well, I didn't drop the pendants. So yay. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Moving on. I call the spiders here Kevin. I'm like, Kevin, just don't jump out and surprise me. You're welcome to be here. Eat some bugs. 
I don't want to kill you. Just let's just stay out of each other's way. So I'm just going to wipe out this mold really quickly. Because it's dusty. I'm going to grab my paper towel. Hope that was entertaining for you. Hope you enjoyed that. I really just want to get the hair out of this. I've already washed it earlier, but it's just the leftover dust that settles in just from being here, right? So I think that Jade's um, suggestion of spraying the alcohol would probably be really helpful on these little guys too because they're just they're just so tiny, right? It would be nice to have anything that can help with the bubbles and make them and not have any imperfections on them because when it's really tiny you notice all of the little imperfections too, right? Alright, one more. All right, so now I'm gonna take the rest of the resin and we're gonna add some black paint to it. All right, let me just catch up here for a second. Oh, good. Nothing but profits, right? I'll go in back and take a look. Thank you, Kim. I didn't know you were here, hi. All right, I'll go back and take another look. I got it? Okay, awesome. Thanks, Christy. Yeah, I'm really happy with them. I'm really happy with how they've turned out. Resin the spider. No, we, we need him to eat bugs. <laughs> as long as he doesn't come at me, we have conversations. There's, there's a spider that tends to come around. I don't know if it's the same spider. I just assume it's the same spider because that's just who I am. But I talk to him all the time and I'll sit in the bathroom. I'll be like, Kevin, I'm in here now. Just please, if you're gonna if you need to come out at night, you can. Just just let me know when you need to come out and just know that if I find you, I'm probably gonna put you outside, but you can come back in. But you know, we talk to each other. <laughs> I'm glad that was entertaining. <laughs> Getting a weird view of your nose and teeth. Sorry about that. Jerry Lynn, I use a process called um, the curly girl method. Six months ago, if you had told me that I was going to be able to have curly hair like this, I would have laughed in your face because any other time that I've ever tried to do anything with my hair to get it to go curly, I've looked like I've slept outside for a while. So I'm just putting, it's usually one tenth. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it because I don't need a ton of black paint in there and just giving it a stir. One tenth compared to the volume of resin. And then just giving it a stir to make some black bases. This is where I use apple barrel paints too, right? If I'm, my apple barrel black paints are perfect for this. Because I'm not going to use them for other stuff. So I'll use them for this. And there we go. So. Sorry about the odd view of my nose and my, my nose and my teeth. That must have been distressing to say the least. Alright. So I'm just going to pour them in here. I'm not going to fill them all the way to the top. Because I want to have that ridge. I give them a good a good amount so I don't want them to be dinky either that first one was probably a little bit too much that's okay the one that I have a big X through is one that has a chunk out of the bottom of the mold so I don't use it anymore because it I don't want it to screw anything up with the pendants, right? And then just kind of coax it into the corners too. If you're, my tables aren't all level, right? Because we live in an old farmhouse. The whole house isn't level. That happens. I imagine it'll be the same when I eventually do my tiny house, right? <laughs> 
it's on wheels, it's only going to be so level. Okay, there's a hair there, just got to pick that out. Satisfying though, isn't it? And so just kind of coaxing it again into the edge. And you can make them as thin or as thick as you want. You could change the colors with different layers if you wanted to. There's so much cool stuff that you could do. I find it's nice. It's 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 actually quicker, right, than making the stones because the stones I I make them really quickly, but I still have to wait a week for them to dry. These I can I can paint on these tomorrow night if I want to. Right, because once they're out of the molds, I usually still give them a few hours just to really harden up when they come out of the mold, but that's also usually because I'm distracted and I do too many things at once. So I hope this is helpful, you guys. Um, I know I haven't posted next week's tutorial yet. I don't even remember what I had decided on for next week's tutorial, um, but I will um, get that posted uh, either later today or tomorrow. Um, I have my notepad where I wrote down enough tutorial ideas to last us till the end of the month, and I just didn't get them all scheduled. So I'll get a bunch done so that you can see what's coming up in upcoming weeks. Um, if you want access to the recording of any of my tutorials they're individually available on the web on my website that's linked in my bio um and uh the other option is my patreon so the patreon has access to the entire library it's like a monthly membership and it's 13 dollars us i don't know what the conversion exactly is to canadian because i i have to set my price in us so it never fluctuates so I'm guessing it's 16 or 17 Canadian. And these tutorials will always be free. I am working on um, setting up a new link in my bio with a tip jar um, in case that calls to anybody. But I'm, I want you to know that I will, I have no intention of ever changing these to not be free tutorials. And I plan on still continuing to learn lots and lots of new stuff, trying new techniques, trying new patterns, um, and I will still happily share with you everything that I learn throughout the processes. And if there's anything specific that you want me to spend some time on, uh, then definitely let me know. I've got some great suggestions through the Facebook group already for different tutorials to do coming up, um, but please keep sending them to me. If there's stuff that you say, hey, I would love to see a tutorial on this. Like, I know that um, I've had a couple requests for, hey, I'd love to see you uh, a tutorial on painting mugs um, and painting on ceramic stuff so we'll do that um, but if there's anything specific that you want to see please let me know and you can either mention it in the Facebook group or you can send me a message whatever's easier for you whatever's easiest for you I kind of feel like at some point when I start doing some larger canvases again, that we'll need to kind of do some of those and talk about planning larger pieces and um, maybe how, how to finish them too, right? Like how to seal them and all of that good stuff. So there'll be lots of different stuff coming. I got lots of stuff in the back of my brain that I want to try. So I'm certainly not going to run out of stuff to show you. That is for sure. I'll come back to the comments here in a couple of minutes, you guys. So once I'm done this, I'm going to put it underneath that little Tupperware again and just let it cure. I, I will go over it with the blowtorch to take care of any bubbles that have come up. I'll go back and check those pendants to see if there's anything else that I need to kind of clean up as far as mucky runovers or drips or anything. Um, and I'll just kind of keep an eye on them for the next little bit if I before they start to cure too much over the next hour or so, I'll 
keep going back and if there's bubbles that need to be popped, I'll, I'll keep going with, with the blowtorch. I'll keep trying to clean up the edges while it's still before it hardens. So it's a bit of a process. You need, it's not the kind of thing that you can just do it and walk away. You need to keep an eye on this stuff. But look at how far that was. This was two ounces in total right because I had one ounce of hardener and one ounce of um, the resin and look at all we got done we got a lot done to to work on finish up those other pendants and I'm gonna have probably 20 this is a 24 piece <clears throat> mold <coughs> Maybe not 20, but I'll get at least a couple more out of this still. This is the thing too, right? Is how can you make your supplies stretch? And if you ever decide to sell your stuff, make sure you give yourself your credit for what you're doing. You're learning how to do all of this stuff. You are taking the time to do it. You know, make sure you're at least paying yourself minimum wage. But, pick, but value yourself. Value your abilities. Value your contribution to just adding art and pretty stuff to the world right what you do has value and don't let anybody else dictate your value to you it's something that I I still struggle with because the first thing that pops into my head is would anybody actually pay money for that and it's funny because I actually saw a TikTok yesterday that said when before you say, would anybody pay money for that? Remember that Tiffany sells paper clips for $16,000, right? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, right. So it makes my question about the, the wine bottle toppers, right? Kind of goofy, like, well, yeah, 25 bucks, that's fine. They would be probably $20,000 at Tiffany's. <laughs> this isn't gonna do en uh, enough for a second one, but that's okay. I'll just leave it in there and let it kind of gum up. So there we go. So now I'm gonna go back in with the blowtorch. Let's see if I can get in for the bubbles. Let's see, see how the bubbles. And this one I'll go back two or three times to get more bubbles out. Because I don't want to sit here and focus the torch on it too much, right? Because that's what that's, that happens. <laughs> and just kind of touching the surface. And there we go. So I'm going to move this off to the side. And I'll keep coming back to this as the day progresses and over the next couple hours. But I'm going to cover it to make sure that no dust gets in there. And then we need to clean up. So let's see. Let me scroll back. Hey, Axel. Okay, I'm just scrolling back here. No, the heat would not help that. I picture you being like Monica Jerry Lynn, right? When, Like Monica when they go to Bermuda for Ross's conference and it's the humidity. Most of my time, the hair's glued to my scalp with sweat. I bet. Jerry Lynn is in Arizona, everybody. Is that a chocolate making mold? I have no idea, honestly. It was a mold that I saw and my mom heard me say that I liked it, so she bought it for me. I have no idea. I w I'd have to even go looking because I don't even have the link to the, to the product because I didn't order it for myself. This is where I go through the paper towel. I'm just gonna go in and try and clean this up. This is where I sit with my garbage can. Very handy. And just start dumping everything in. And then once I'm done completely, I will dump my garbage can into a garbage bag and seal it so that there's no danger of any animals getting their faces or their paws stuck in this stuff. Right. 
This little silicone dude cleans up really, really nicely though. This takes a little bit of time. Do you put the clip on after you paint? Yes, the little hook for the pendant. Yeah, so once I have uh, painted it and put the top layer of resin on, I will put the, um, the little loop for the pendant. Um, the reason those ones didn't is because they were touch-up ones, um, but most of my pendants don't have that extra layer of resin on the back the way some of these did. I should send you my cat head mold. You could leave the cat hair in it. People would comment on the realisticness of it. That's amazing. Um, I did get the, pen, the, the mold off of Amazon. Um, I just don't remember the, the name or anything of it because, like I said, I didn't buy it for myself. Um, but if you search round silicone molds and go through a couple of pages, I think that you would eventually find it. I'll try and find it and put it in my Amazon store list as well. Um, and I will put the resin in there too, you guys. I've got Happy Dotting Company molds in there, dotting tools, multi-surface paints, that sort of thing on my Amazon list so far. Um, but I will add the rest in for sure. So now I'm just taking off my gloves. And I'm going to just get rid of this garbage right now. I've got a garbage bag ready for it. Seal it up and not have to worry about the critters. All right. And then I'll go and give my hands a good wash and be good to go. My find today. Oh, a red teapot. Oh, that's a good reason to go yard sailing. Are you going to paint it? Are you going to paint it? Are you going to paint it? Make sure you use your multi-surface paints, eh? So that it'll stick to it well. Looking forward to large pieces. I really like the record albums. I have some record albums too, so that would be a great tutorial to do. Because I have some. Yeah, we'll totally have to do that. The lines are already there. The whole fits the clock. Yeah, please. That'd be awesome. That's really cool. I always wonder about that, uh, but there are so many people out there who don't know how to do this stuff. Just kind of stinks for us because we surround ourselves with people who can. And that's the hard part, right? Um, but it's so funny because I say all of this and if I was to go and look at some of my, what I would consider direct competitors or, or people who do something similar to me, um, I'm still underpricing my stuff. Right. But I'm having a really hard time changing that because I'm feeling good about what I'm doing and what I'm making and how much I'm making for it. Um, but I am I am I'm still struggling with that. And I think it's it's not going to work for me to raise my prices on certain things for a while. I think I'm not going to have a hard time having sending uh, setting good prices on, on large canvases. Like I'm, I'm not going to have an issue doing that, you know, but there's some other things where it's going to be really, really tough because there's mental blocks that I need to get through before I, I'm ready to do that too, right? Yes, you will clearly see and smell the burnt resin, for sure. Uh, I would love to see a photo of a pendant being worn if possible. Sure, I can put, I've got a pendant that I'm keeping for myself. I'll put it on my chain after and I will, I will put it on where I want it to land, which would help me determine colors. Yeah, sure, I can totally do that, Beth, no problem. I'll do that and I'll post it on the, the Facebook group uh, after the live here, okay? I'm doing good, Axel, how are you? It's like this in the glass community too, but we're all junkies for art and happily collect from each other too. Yeah, and that's the fun part, right? Yeah, we'll totally do that. We'll totally do some records. We have Facebook Marketplace. I can get 20 to 40 record albums for like 10 bucks, no shipping. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, that's a really good idea. When you were talking about molds, you mentioned one place that I hadn't heard of. Not happy. Um, 
Pisa Supply, P-I-E, S as in Sam, A, Supply. Um, they are on Etsy, and they are Canadian. You do such perfect work. She's not retrained. Oh, thank you, Janice. That's so kind. I'll get there. I'll get there eventually. I'm getting better. I'm definitely getting better. Um, one of the big steps for me... Um, so when I started doing the mugs, you know, I had such a great response for it, but I didn't realize, I didn't realize how heavy they were going to be. You know, they take longer. If I don't have the colors that I'm risking bubbling when I bake the mugs for custom colors, there's so many different things. They take longer. If they screw up, then, then it's somebody else who's waiting longer. What if I'm not feeling inspired to paint a mug that particular day? There's all these different things, right? So a big, big step for me has been making the decision to stop doing custom orders or at least stop listing them on my website. I know I still have a couple of custom order listings still up there. They actually are going to be coming down in the next day or two when I can sit down and focus to do that because I know that I'm going to be better for myself, better for you and better for my business if I streamline what it is I'm making and how I can produce them, right? Like I can produce one custom mug compared to I could probably do three or four if it's just ones that I'm painting with whatever ideas I have, with whatever colors I have available and just pre-painting them and having them ready to ship. So it's not like it's monetarily to my benefit to take all of that time to do the custom orders. And it's been an incredibly valuable learning experience. And I've, I've created some pieces. I've been challenged so much with some colors and I've, I've over, I've successfully overcome so many of those challenges, um, that, you know, it's definitely something that, I still want to do custom orders, but I don't want it to be an active listing on my website. And that was a big, big step for me because there was that voice in the back of my head going, well, now you got to sit down and figure out what you're going to make. And what if nobody buys it, right? There's always that fear that's there. And that's where it's a lot of mental work that goes into whatever it is that you're doing for your passion and, and, and what you want to do. You have to be willing to take risks. You have to be willing to put time into something that nobody buys. You have to be willing to try it and jump in and be scared, but do it anyway, you know? And that's that's where I'm so grateful for this art form is that it gives me time to sit and center myself and slow my breathing and listen to my instincts and focus on the joy of it right? And it gives me that time. And that's when the inspirations and the ideas come, right? Devin Dotting. Yeah, that was the other one that I mentioned. You're okay. You're relaxing today. Oh, I'm glad Axel. Give yourself a break. eh? that's good. Devin Dotting might be the one. Um, Dot Art Depot. Is another one. So Happy Dotting Company, Dot Art Depot, Devon Dotting, um, Pisa Supply, and uh, Jesse D Designs is the other one too. So there's lots of great options out there. All right, I'm actually going to take the blowtorch on this one more time. I know there were a couple more bubbles that were just waiting to come up. It really is so satisfying to see those bubbles pop, though, eh? All right. Do you guys have any other question that I can help with? It's Devin? Okay, awesome. I thank you, Jan. That means a lot to me. I appreciate that. I, I spend a lot of time thinking about it. Um, I, I listen to a lot. It's funny because on the lives is, is one of the few times that I listen, to, I listen to music when I'm packing orders and when I'm on the lives. Otherwise, I spend a lot of time listening to different speakers, but I specifically listen an awful lot to Abraham Hicks. And it's given me different perspectives and, and different ways to think about things and different ways to 
to put my energy into and and what I've really really come to understand the importance of for me anyways is how to focus my energy how to focus and where to focus it and what works really well for me and it's it's helped a lot and if any of the stuff that has helped for me is helpful for you I am I'm thrilled I'm absolutely thrilled and I I hope that um I hope that it makes you feel a little lighter because that's my only goal now. My only goal is to feel as good as I possibly can as often as I can. That is my most important job. It's really my only job, right? One of the big perspectives that has come up in a lot of the videos that I've listened to is, you know, everything that we are doing is to feel better for doing it, right? We work hard to make the money because that's going to make life easier and help us do this. And, and it's all to feel good. So if I can start to focus my mind on the things that already make me feel good, because there's lots of those things, then I'm in a better frame of mind to be able to do the things that I'm not as excited about doing and, ex and, and looking forward to and, and wanting to do. And they don't feel quite as heavy and I don't get triggered as much by other stuff. And, and that's kind of the whole point. And, and one of the perspectives that I really liked that came up is, you know, you've, there's all these people who want you to act a certain way, right? You need to do this for me because you know that I don't do well when people speak to me this way. So I need you to change how you do things. And I've come to see what a really tall, heavy order that is for other people. Because if somebody said that to me, I would tell them where to go and say, I'm not, I'm not being who you want me to be just to make you happier. Because then I'm going to be miserable, right? I, I try to focus on how can I be, how can I feel as good as possible? Because then I will be the best version of me for the other people that I love. And I'm okay with being selfish and doing all of that sort of stuff. I, I, I don't take, I, I think that that's a good thing. And, and if spending time with me and talking about painting and talking about all of this other stuff makes you feel a little bit better about doing good things for yourself so that you can just be happier no matter what else is going on in the world. Doesn't mean that stuff is going to go away. Doesn't mean it's not going to be heavy. But if it makes it a little bit easier for you to carry, then I'm I'm happy to share everything that, that's worked for me. And that's all I could ever really want. I love you guys. And I'm really grateful that you choose to spend so much time with me. I'm I'm grateful for every single one of you. And I hope that this has been helpful for you. Um, I'm done going off on my tangents for today, so let's start the long goodbye. If there's anything you need, any questions that you have, please let me know. I will go, Beth, and I will take a picture of the necklace pendant and put it on the Facebook group of me wearing it. Um, the, where it sits is going to be entirely up to you because these pendants do not come with a chain. So however long your necklace is, is where, your ne where it's going to sit, right? So it's only... Um, it's all going to depend on your own chain of how, where, it, where it sits, but I'll show you where it is on the necklace that I have. Um, but yeah, it's the pendant only. It's not a chain. So it's going to be entirely up to you how long you want it to be and where it's going to sit on your body. Um, but if any other questions come up, please let me know. Oh, I love you guys. You're most welcome. You are most welcome. Thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out. You know where to find me if anything comes up. Please take care of yourselves. Give yourselves some love. And I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. I love you guys. You're welcome, Beth. You'll see that soon in the Facebook. And Janice, I'll reach out to you when your pendant is good to go. And we'll get that sent out to you. I'm so glad you were able to come again, Jade. That's so wonderful. Thank you, guys. Please take care of yourselves, okay? Be nice to yourselves and spend some time doing something that you enjoy. Love ya. Bye.